Very nice. I think they've seen your films. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh. That's what it's about. I make my movies for people, and I, I love those evenings, and, and just have it be a celebration of movies and entertainment. I just thought they were wonderful, and to be able to have the opportunity to reboot this, and this, this one being kind of an origin story of this character, Nick, and uh, I just, just... I'm Blake Childress, and I'm that one filmmaker, and have any of you seen the classic Universal monster movies from the 1930s and 40s? Yeah. So this is why Universal decided to try and make their own cinematic reboot universe with The Wolfman. And it flopped. Then they tried again with Dracula Untold. And it flopped. Finally, in 2017, they tried with The Mummy starring Tom Cruise. They created like a Marvel-style logo, and it had lots of publicity with actors who planned on being in future Dark Universe films. All bets were set in place. Well, third time's a charm, right? <laughs> what the fuck? So do you guys remember the original Brennan Fraser mummy movies? They were action packed, <laughs> had fun, lighthearted dialogue. We are in serious trouble. It calls for it! Made a shit ton of money. The movie was, in all honesty, the best way to remake the original mummy movie from 1932. So I can see why Universal decided that The Mummy was the best film to start this new universe of monster movies, considering the three Frasier movies still being fresh in filmgoers' minds. But you see, there's a problem. The director, Alex Kurtzman, has directed only one other movie from 2012. People Like Us, which is a mediocre, melodramatic family movie. And this guy is being asked to kickstart an action, horror, cinematic universe featuring some of the most famous monsters of all time. I think what you will see is the story of, um, uh, you know, a 5,000-year-old um, Egyptian princess who... Um, yeah. One thing that confuses me is the writers behind the movie aren't bad writers. In fact, they helped write some pretty good action movies from the 90s and 2000s. Hell, two of them are responsible for some of the scripts for the Mission Impossible movies. But the script for this movie is just fucking awful. I'm a doctor. Doctor. Chemical pathology, neurosurgery. Fellow of the Royal Society. Also a lawyer. My name is... Jokes are made, but they all feel effortless. Like, setup happens in a second, and then punchline immediately after, so the timing is just rushed as hell. And the quality of the jokes are so lazy that most feel like humor comes from stating the obvious. I'm thinking we're probably gonna die here. I knew it! The dialogue is also just awful throughout the entire movie. I mean, all the dialogue between characters feels like an exposition dump that either helps explain Tom Cruise and his motivations and character choices, or it just helps explain the plot. And the business being evil, Mr. Mott. Recognize, contain, examine, destroy. The biggest problem with the movie is that most of it is just unoriginal and rips off like 15 different movies and combines them all together. With the plot itself, the movie is ripping off the original Universal Mummy movies, which I guess it makes sense, you know, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. And they also rip off the charming, stylized, and grounded action of the Frasier Mummy movies, but without any of the charm, style, or anything even close to being grounded in reality. The movie also tries to rip off the Marvel Cinematic Universe with Russell Crowe acting as the Nick Fury of the Dark Universe, 
with Tom Cruise supposed to be the Tony Stark likable Iron Man character. Although both are horribly miscast, which I'll talk about later. The movie also rips off, of all things, the relationship between the characters of David and Jack in An American Werewolf in London. Can I have a piece of toast? Get the fuck out of here, Jack. Where the comical supporting role helps the main character understand the supernatural situation they have found themselves in. And while it works in Werewolf in London because David literally left his friend behind to get slaughtered by a werewolf, so it makes sense that he's haunted by the memory of his friend that he basically killed. Jack. In this movie, the comic relief character, played by Jake Johnson, is killed by a random bug in the mummy hole. And after he becomes an undead zombie, Cruz shoots him and that's it. So the motivation of being haunted by him doesn't really make sense, and he even explains that the only reason he's with him is because of the mummy curse. Which, out of all the exposition in this movie, never gets explained properly. So, fuck it. This movie feels like it was directed as a horror slash superhero movie to pay tribute to the horror origins of the mummy, but to also pander to modern audiences with the rise in popularity of superhero cinematic universes. Both genres do not complement each other at all, and this is likely because the movie barely even attempts to properly combine the two effectively. The scares in the movie, if you can even call them scares, are just jump scares where the editor edits in loud sounds to make you jump. And the action is quickly cut and the choreography feels like two young kids playing in their backyard. The movie fails at paying tribute to the horror origins of the original Mummy series from the 30s and 40s, and also fails at being a good superhero style action movie. So what the fuck is this movie even trying to be? The lead cast members in this movie are probably the worst people you could have gotten. Tom Cruise's character is written as this young Tony Stark type, which does not apply to Cruise at all. In fact, when Robert Downey Jr. was an Iron Man, he was 43, which works for the character. But when Tom Cruise was in this movie, he was 55. Like, there's a part in this movie where Russell Crowe calls Tom Cruise a young man. Despite the fact that Tom Cruise is actually older than Russell Crowe. <laughs> you are a younger man. <laughs> Nothing against Tom, but his age is what ruins him in this movie. As for Crow, I really just don't see him as Jekyll and Hyde. Jekyll was always described as the complete opposite of Hyde. So he was a good man with little to nothing wrong with him, which is because of his experiment that caused his dark and evil emotions to become a separate personality within his mind. In this movie, Crow doesn't play up the difference between Jekyll and Hyde at all, which I largely blame on the script because Crow was given nothing for his character anyway. To tell you a story. A story about a patient of mine. Jekyll in this movie is just Nick Fury, and Hyde is just some strong guy that beats the shit out of Tom Cruise. So one thing that a lot of people point out as a problem with this movie is how insistent it is with creating a cinematic universe and setting up like three or four fucking dark universe movies just within this one movie, which in turn ruins this movie which caused no one to see it, which then destroys the entire universe from ever happening. Think about it, with Iron Man the movie was made with two Marvel characters. Nick Fury was only there in the post credits to tease the future of the Avengers, which didn't happen until years later. John Favreau made sure to make a good movie first to get people interested in watching other movies that were connected to it. That's the key to a good cinematic universe, a good first movie that establishes a basis of quality that fans can appreciate and look forward to. Then in 2013, DC attempted their own universe with Man of Steel. And I do have to admit that while Man of Steel is definitely not as good as Iron Man, at least Zack Snyder focused on making a decent movie first rather than make a commercial for movies coming later. 
That is until the shit show that is Batman vs. Superman came out and bombarded us with fucking Batman, Wonder Woman, Lex Luthor, uh, Apocalypse, the Justice League. Eventually, DC learned from their mistakes and started to make some decent superhero movies like Wonder Woman, Shazam, and Aquaman that focused on making a good movie first rather than tease the future. So, why in the hell did a year after Batman vs. Superman prove that forcing a cinematic universe upon a viewer makes them feel overwhelmed and less likely to throw money at you? Universal decides to scramble together a superhero cinematic universe with, of all things, the classic horror monsters from the 30s and 40s. The Dark Universe is a fucking mistake, and that's all I have to say about it. In conclusion, the Mummy is a rip-off, lazy, and soulless attempt at capturing the lightning in a bottle Marvel Studios had more than a decade ago in Iron Man. And for that, I give it a 4.5 out of 10. Now, this is where the video would end if it wasn't for this fucking guy. <laughs> Technically, the Dark Universe is still a thing today, except it's now being run by the horror movie rapist Jason Blum and his company Blumhouse. Basically what happened was after the mummy flopped in the US and relied on international markets to make its money back, Universal shut down the Dark Universe name, well, for now, and decided to hand the Universal Monsters to Blum and let him do whatever he wants. According to Wikipedia, it says new projects are still being worked on, like Bride of Frankenstein is still being made apparently, The Invisible Woman by Elizabeth Banks is also happening, and also a movie titled Dark Army by Paul Feig is still happening. So I, I have no idea if the name is still dead or if they plan on reviving it with these new projects. All we know is they decided to give the Invisible Man film to Blum, and considering Leigh Whannell already made his directorial debut upgrade with the company, they decided to offer him the opportunity to direct the reboot himself. And I just watched it, and I gotta hand it to him. Leigh is still a great director that turned one of the weirder and more obscure Universal monsters into a stylized and creative horror experience. I loved Upgrade a lot, mainly because the movie had a great story, decent acting, and some great cinematography, but the only thing it didn't do well was the script. So with Invisible Man, he was given almost double for a budget, and with it, he made a great movie. First of all, the story itself is great, and I thought I was going to hate it for not following the same plot of the H.G. Wells novel, but it actually felt like a contemporary twist of the same story from the perspective of a new character. I also loved the script, because most of the scenes were written with a lot of good dialogue. I think my favorite thing about the movie was just how the movie was shot. Most of the scenes in the film were shot in long one-takes, which helped build a lot of tension in the scenes where Moss's character is discovering the shit the Invisible Man is doing in her house. I also loved how the low-budget feel of the movie added to its makeup, costumes, and locations. Like in scenes where Moss's character is in public, She's wearing makeup, but when she goes home, or when she's in the mental hospital, she looks like utter shit with bags under her eyes, and her hair is messy. I also liked how the house she lives in throughout the movie is small, and only has like two to three rooms, and the house itself is dirty, and it looks like people actually live there. The acting was wonderful from everyone, especially Moss, who felt so real in the moments where you can tell she feels alone and caved in when she tells people about being stalked by a fucking invisible man. Another thing I liked was how the invisible man in the movie actually symbolizes the haunting nature of abuse after leaving a relationship, which is admittedly a pretty interesting addition to the invisible man storyline. I did have a few problems with the film. First off, without spoiling anything, there's a scene where a person is killed in a restaurant by the Invisible Man with Moss there, and he makes it look like she did it, but obviously there would be some security cameras there that could easily prove that she didn't do it at all, but the movie just ignores that. Second, the character Griffin, who is the Invisible Man, is somehow able to push people against the wall and kill them easily with little to no effort at all, without ever explaining why he's that fucking strong. 
which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Also, I thought the ending where, big spoiler alert, I want all of you guys to see this movie, so, you know, spoiler alert, you know, blah, yada, yada, go see the movie. Moss kills Griffin using the invisible suit after he gaslights her by saying he had nothing to do with stalking her. And she takes the invisibility suit with her, and her cop friend just lets her get away with it, and rules it as a suicide since no one would believe he was killed by an invisible killer. Despite the fact that earlier in the mental hospital scenes, there had to be some footage of the security guards being killed by a, a fucking floating gun and being shoved against the wall by literally no one. Despite all this, I loved the movie. And... I, I fucking can't wait for Le Winnell's newest projects. I give The Invisible Man an 8.5 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching this new video, and I hope you all enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. I'm Blake Childress, and I'm that one filmmaker, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye now.